All right, guys, last week I skipped my alternatives video, but this week I'm going with this particular scenario since you guys have been asking for alternatives of this particular fragrance right here, a Fragcom Darling fragrance. This is the Rive Gauche Pour Homme from YSL, and then you also have this particular version right here. Both of them have been discontinued, at least on uh, USA or in USA because this one was removed from the USA YSL beauty website last year and this obviously has been discontinued for a while and it's long sought after so you guys are asking for alternatives of this particular fragrance or this two, these two versions and I'm going to tell you ten alternatives six that are fairly close and four additional options coming right up Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. That's right, Rive Gauche Pour Homme. It's a very popular fragrance, um, if you can still get your hands on it. I have my one of my original bottles, and of course I have a backup of this right, right here as well. But this one was removed from the YSL website last year. Uh, so I guess it's being discontinued. I don't know what the availability is in Europe, but I know it's removed from USA's website. And I feel like um, this particular collection is called La Collection from YSL. And I feel like they're removing everything from that collection. Even M7 was on its uh, way out, I believe. Uh, YSL Pour Homme. And the only one that was being left there was Jazz. I don't know how long that will stay there either. But this came out in 2003 and this one was uh, relaunched as this in 2011. We're going to find out about this fragrance and the alternatives uh, in a bit. But if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed to the channel, please click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. So I guess I should say that the very first time I heard about Rive Gauche was when I was a little kid. My mom used to wear Rive Gauche Pour Femme, this one right here. So this bottle and the image and the, the feel, the canister, had stuck in my mind uh, forever until this was launched in the early 2000s and I was like, wow, this brings me back, takes me back to when I was, uh, you know, smelling what my mom used to wear in the original Woman's. They're completely different fragrances obviously this one is all about aldehydes very feminine fragrance and this one went the barbershop direction so this came out in 2003 created by Jacques Cavalier and this one features notes of lavender star anise rosemary geranium patchouli cloves oak moss vetiver guyac wood and more so it's basically your barbershop fragrance in a you know a bottle so this was around for about eight years, nine years, somewhere around there. And then it was uh, put into a collection called La Collection, which went into this bottle right here. So this particular fragrance, it smells very similar. Uh, some of the notes are changed around. I'm not gonna read you the notes right now, but um, I felt like it was lacking a little bit then this particular fragrance was too. But along the way, when they launched this, they had also launched the Intense version, which I own a bottle as well. And I felt like it, even though it's called Intense, both of them are eau de toilette. So I don't understand why they decided to go with an intense fragrance as an eau de toilette, which didn't make sense to me. And then this was not, uh, this is not uh, any way at all a, a, an intense fragrance. Both of them are not. So they, they had ended up making a, um, a light, Rive Gauche Pour Homme light in 2004. So a year after they launched this and this, which, um, which I feel like both of them came out in the same year as what that's what it says uh, online. Uh, and then they launch a year later, they want launch a, a lighter version. I never have sampled the light version, which I don't think it's necessary, but um, I was always very curious to get a bottle and never found it online. I still have these bottles, of course, and um, this is, of course, what I have remaining in this particular bottle. Um, and it is a nice, pleasant, barbershoppy fragrance. And what I liked about this particular barbershoppy fragrance experience was the fact that it had that star anise in there. And at this time, I was really obsessed with star anise. I, I, I love star anise or licorice anise kind of a, uh, smells. That was a very pleasant fragrance experience for me. And I love the idea of like a foamy barbershop um, uh, you know, shaving cream. It just brought me back memories of that. And I've been shaving myself since uh, in my teens, like mid-teens. So I always loved that uh, canister of uh, shaving cream and the smell of that shaving cream. And it, the, you know, the impression that it had left on me. So I've always loved the barbershop uh, fragrances. Long live the, the, these uh, fragrances from YSL. I don't know if they'll ever bring them back. I doubt it. But uh, we do have some alternatives, and there are six that I find to be somewhat close to uh, the uh, Rive Gauche Pour Homme uh, 
and or the one that's in here uh, in the lock collection. There's 10 here and six of them are fairly close. Uh, not identical, obviously. Th these are not clones. These are from brands that are releasing, you know, regular fragrances. They're all releasing fougeres and barber style, barbershop style fragrances. And there are also four additional alternatives that I'm going to go ahead and um, let you know about. But I think what we're going to do is start backwards. I'm going to start with the less, um, close uh, versions of fragrances so there will be four and then work our way to the very beginning and the one that i feel like is the closest to rive gauche pour homme so we'll start off with this one they're not identical to rive gauche but it kind of goes in that direction uh, this is a fragrance i've been talking about for a while and it is a indie house called rogue perfumery and this is mousse illumine so this one's actually a very barbershoppy fragrance uh, it's not at all close to uh, rive gauche pour homme but for me it smells like a very soft foamy uh, shaving cream just kind of like squeezed out of a can I don't use that kind of shaving cream these days. I use more like um, a creams that actually uh, will, you know, shave off my my hair. So uh, because I have very sensitive skin, but it brings back memories of those kind of like shaving creams that were in canisters or are in canisters. But what I like about this one is it's, it's mostly about oak moss, and uh, typically uh, I do see or I do. Uh, notice that oak moss is featured in barbershop or fougere fragrances so but this one the the star is not the lavender or something similar an aromatic note similar to uh lavender but uh, it's more about the oak moss you do have some woody touches cypress there's some incense resinous touches of olibanum and i think the star of, of this not the star but the the uh note that's supposed to like be featured as a fougere barbershop note of um Lavender is the bay laurel in here and then there's some musk in there as well. It's very very wonderful It reminds me of those green fragrances Barbershop fragrances from the early 80s or late 70s and it's really really beautiful. It's very long-lasting It's very concentrated and it uh, smells phenomenal So the reason I picked this one is because there is this Artemisia note in here It's Artemisia and Artemisia tends to smell a little licorice -y. and since there is star anise in the uh, Rive Gauche I decided to put this one as a option for you guys to try they're not overly priced it's indie um, but they're not like inexpensive either but uh, they perform wonderfully and uh, I think you guys should definitely check it out so this is rogue perfumery and it's called mousse illumine uh, it's really really wonderful it smells like Irish spring soap a little bit too so if you like that kind of uh, smell definitely check that out this is the next one I'm going to talk about we're getting closer, and then the, the, the further up we go, it's going to be the, the one that's going to be the closest to Rive Gauche. So this is uh, Chanel Boy. Now this one is a little closer to um, the uh, Rive Gauche, but then again, it has a very Chanel DNA. Um, so you're basically smelling that Chanel DNA under there. Uh, but this one's about lavender. There's musk, there's geranium, and I feel like the geranium is really amped up. And the geranium and the musk and lavender are kind of like working um, like hand in hand together. They're like really, really close. But sometimes I feel like the geranium takes over, and then it starts reminding me a little bit of um, Hermes geranium, uh, uh, equipage geranium, but not all the time. There are some almondy touches in here of heliotrope. There's some sandalwood, grapefruit, there's um, orange blossom, and there's some lemons, and there's some um, vanilla as well. So very, very unique smell, but it's a fougere barbershop slash uh, very Chanel-like DNA. If you like that Chanel DNA, you will like it. And I feel like there's some aldehyde touches under there as well, even though they're not credited. And I feel like aldehydes are typically a Chanel DNA anyway. So even though they don't credit it here, uh, I feel like it's in there. But it's still classy. It's a very classy scent. If you can afford this one, because it is on the pricey side, it's about three fifty for a two hundred ml bottle like this. It's definitely pricier, but I feel like it also lingers on a lot longer. Because one of the problems with um, Rive Gauche the, was it didn't have very good longevity, especially when it came uh, to this particular version. I felt like at that time it was kind of butchered, and uh, they gave us a very very um, diluted version. But if you want longevity, both of the two uh, that I've uh, spoken about so far are going to be wonderful with longevity. So this is Chanel Boy. It's another alternative that you can try. That's not 
really close to Reef Gauche, but then again, it, it is sort of. So this next one I spoke about recently, uh, a comparison video I did with uh, Beau de Jour and uh, Sartorial. So Sartorial is another fragrance that's not similar or smelling like Reef Gauche, but then again, it's in the same ballpark. And now this is another option I wanted to give you guys. And this one actually, to me, smells a lot like Brut from, um, uh, what's the name of the brand? Is it Fabergé? Yeah, Brut from Fabergé. Uh, I, I recently watched a documentary about Fabergé eggs and in that documentary they, they mentioned a lot of the fragrances uh, of Fabergé's. Anyway, it reminds me of Fabergé Brut, but um, uh, it's it's a, a unique creation where Bertrand du Chaffou, I don't know if he was inspired by Brut uh, Fabergé, but then uh, it sort of uh, smells like that, but in the end it's more like a real barbershop-y kind of experience because there's lavender here, there's lots of uh, beeswax, so there's like a honeyed experience, even though there's honey in here as well. Now this one also has all the highs, as I was saying in the Chanel, there's all the headache touch to it. Oak moss keeps coming up with um, Fougere barbershop fragrances. Leather, woody notes, and metallic notes. It's a unique creation. It really does remind me of Fabergé Brut, but then again it's it, in its own unique way, kind of like a very uh, Penhaligon's uh, creation but wonderful I feel like it's very classy it's not an overwhelming overwhelmingly strong fragrance I feel like it does justice with uh, the performance on me and uh, you know I enjoy wearing it and sometimes I don't really pre personally prefer uh, metallic notes and this one really doesn't get metallic I feel like it's very ambery because of the honey and the beeswax together I, I, I love this one it's Sartorial from Penhaligon's. It's definitely a wonderful creation. So the next one is Tom Ford's Beau de Jour, this one right here. And I feel like even though this has similar notes of what's in Rive Gauche, uh, and I feel like this one actually, what they've done is they've amplified the lavender, where they don't they don't at all have any of like that licoricey green um, herbal spicy uh, smell. So it's ultra potent in the lavender. There's lots of uh, patchouli. Rosemary does appear here as it does in Rive Gauche, but then, you know, there's some mint and oak moss and geranium sage. It's a very, very herbal concoction and it does tend to go a little metallic. And even though, as I said in that video, comparing these two, this one credits metallic notes. It doesn't really go metallic on me. Uh, this one does not credit any metallic notes and there's like the herbs are very sharp. There's a sharpness about it. But even though I love the, the smell, don't get me wrong, I think it's a very, very solid release from Tom Ford. Thankfully, it's in this uh, less expensive uh, bottle compared to their private blend, even though it's definitely uh, more on the pricier side than regular designers. I feel like it's a good job that they did give us a less expensive version of it. But you know, it's a great, great fougere. I feel like the uh, just the fact that the lavender is just so amped up, the aromatic touches are so amped up, it does get close to Reeve Gauche and then it doesn't. So even in the end, when you compare the smells, the ideas there, the smells are not very identical. So I feel like this is an alternative, but we're going to get to the more familiar smells or ones that are closer to the fragrance. So that's my fourth alternative option that doesn't smell alike to the Reeve Gauche uh, fragrances. And then we're going to go right to another Penhaligon's. And here we're starting to get close to um, the uh, Reef Gauche, and this is English Fern, uh, Fern from uh, Penhaligon's, and I actually have a video on the channel of uh, this particular fragrance with Sartorial, and then also the tra tragedy of Lord George. There's three Fougeres barbershop fragrances that uh, Penhaligon's has. Now this one, to me, it does have similarities to Reef Gauche. It's getting closer now, but this is my sixth option. I have five others that I feel like are closer to Reef Gauche compared to this one, but this one has lavender, geranium, oak moss, cloves patchouli sandalwood so that it has cloves in it and we've we've gosh has the notes of cloves listed in it as well and i feel like this one kind of does get close um it smells a little like very classic um i feel like it um it's an older fragrance but been reformulated for current noses but then when you put your nose to it it does have lots of classic touches so in the end it might feel a little too um, mature for some young noses but I feel like if you're already exploring barbershop fragrances you're gonna appreciate fragrances like this so check it out don't dismiss this one I feel like it's great it smells like lots of lavender and geranium and oak moss all rolled into one to give us a wonderful barbershop experience again it's not the closest but you can actually get away with this one thinking it has similarities to Reef Gauche from uh, YSL. So anyway, English Fern from Penhaligon's is another wonderful option for replacing Reef Gauche. All right, now we're going to the top five. 
So we're going to start off first off with another Tom Ford. There's two Tom Fords and two Penn Halligans. So this is the second Tom Ford. This is called Fougere Platine. So this one, um, I had shot a video of this one comparing to Fougere Argent. I never aired those that particular video. I don't know if you want a comparison of that video. I'll, I'll air it. I shot it almost two years ago. I'm not sure why it never made it on air. But here, I feel like this is a unique take on Rive Gauche where they've amplified the licorice -y kind of anise-y touches of Artemisia note. In fact, um, I feel like it also kind of hints at a little bit of the Mousse Lumine, but not quite, they're not identical. But this one is all about clary sage, tobacco, Artemisia, woody notes, lavender, cedar, olibanum, and honey. This is phenomenal as a, as a fragrance. I love the way it smells and it dries down to smell really, really close to the Rive Gauche, but a little more on the green side. That, that licorice, or not necessarily licorice, the Artemisia note, which is in that same family as absinthe and wormwood and anise and licorice, uh, really kind of stands out even when it's dried down uh, on your skin. But uh, it has great longevity and it smells wonderful. I just keep uh, wanting to smell this one over and over again because I really love it. The tobacco and the clary sage and the artemisia, just wonderful concoction. Like the, the mix of the, the smells is wonderful. Then again, it is a greener take on uh, a Fougere barbershop fragrance and I feel like it's also a greener take on uh, the beloved uh, Rive Gauche from YSL, Rive Gauche Pour Homme. So if you don't know this one, check it out and compare it. I feel like, uh, Fougère de Argent, I, I, don't, I don't appreciate or I don't love Fougère de Argent as much as I love this one. This also kind of hints at a little bit of um, uh, Vert de Bois, I believe it's called from uh, Tom Ford, because it, it has a kind of licorice uh, vibe as well. But this one's definitely unique. So if you like it a little more green and licorice the experience of this, because remember, this one has star anise and that has that licorice vibe. But here with the Artemisia note, they've actually like increased it and amped it up. So you get a little bit more of that. But as I said, as it's drying down, it starts reminding me a lot of Rive Gauche Pour Homme. Anyway, this is Fougère Platine. Check it out. I feel like it's definitely a, a great scent. Love the way it smells. So this next one is a popular one. It's not my favorite. Uh, I don't know why, but I own it. And the only reason I bought it is because of a substitute for Rive Gauche. And I've, 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 you know, I've come back to it and, and I put it at number four because it is pretty close to Rive Gauche. This is uh, at the Barbers from Maison Margiela. And what I don't like about this one, and it, it does smell close to uh, Rive Gauche Pour Homme, I feel like it's faint. It's not like um, beefy. Everything I've sampled for you guys today, or I've told you about today, has some heft to it. But for some reason, just when you smell this one, it just smells a little weak to me. I don't know if it's me comparing them to other fragrances, uh, but uh, everything that I've, uh, you know, sampled, as I said, has some heft to it. This one just seems like a weakling. I don't know why. Anyway, At The Barber's has similarities to Reef Gauche Pour Homme from YSL. And again, uh, if you're comparing the two, they're quite similar because they're kind of light. Uh, both fragrances from the YSL and this are on the light side. But what I've been telling you so far about is more on the heftier side. And get this, this is a L'Oreal owned brand and also YSL is a L'Oreal owned brand. So I feel like, yes, they're gonna give us something very light. In the end, it is a pleasant scent. It is barbershoppy, it is a fougere, and it's all about lavender, musk, basil, rosemary, oak moss, le leather, geranium, bitter orange, you know, it's, it's what you pay for. Uh, it's about $103 for 100 ml. You might like this one over some of the other ones I said, but uh, it's just, you smell it and you compare. Some of the ones that I'm gonna get to after this really are getting close to Rive Gauche, but you can check this out. I think best way for you guys to uh, sample these is probably get some samples to see uh, what you think of them. But if, I, if it was me, I would skip this one, if especially if you like your fragrances to be more niche and you like the heft or the you know intensity of uh, some of the other fragrances. Anyway, at the Barbers from Maison Margiela. I like the brand a lot, don't get me wrong. I feel like this is not one of their strong ones. Just, that's my opinion. This next one is a classic. This is a uh, Azzaro Pour Homme. Here we got the anise again. And this one dries down wonderfully. Um, it reminds me a lot of Rive Gauche Pour Homme, and this has been around since 1978, I believe. I have a full review of this one I did with Saffron. 
Um, so this one has l lavender, anise, oak moss, leather, vetiver, lemon, amber, sandalwood, caraway, patchouli, and even though both of them are eau de toilettes, these two are eau de toilettes, this one definitely lingers on longer. You do have to like caraway, which kind of gets close to cumin, and it does appear in the dry down, so you got to be careful about that. But what I love about this one is the classic touches and that anise, that green, pungent, um, slightly boozy smell of anise is amazing. This one actually has stood the test of time. It's so many years old and people still love it and people come back to it, especially if you like a classically smelling uh, Fougere Barbershop fragrance. These two are both classics, but they're completely different. I feel like this one's more on the powerhouse side, uh, more like 80s powerhouses. This one goes back uh, much uh, older, I believe. I, I could be wrong, but I think this is definitely an older fragrance. But Azzaro Pour Homme, wonderful fragrance. I feel like it's really close. It does have a little more anise a licorice touch. But then again, this one had the star anise. And they dry down to be very, very close. So you won't be disappointed with this one. And I'm sure you can find some great deals on Azzaro Pour Homme. So that is not number three. So two more left, guys. And number two is a fragrance that I've spoken a lot about on this channel. And uh, it's... Um, one that I recently re-reviewed as a 10-year anniversary. I'm speaking about Fougere Royale from the House of Hubigant. And this particular fragrance was launched in the late 1800s. It's the first Fougere fragrance. But it was brought back in 2010. And as I said, I just re-reviewed it for its 10-year uh, anniversary. And it's phenomenal release. This one focuses on lavender, geranium, green notes, oak moss, chamomile, clary sage, bergamot. Now, I feel like this one comes really close to Rive Gauche Pour Homme. But then again, it goes in a different direction. Um, it doesn't get really like up there smelling identical. So in the end, it does have similarities. And it dries down to smell very close to Rive Gauche but they have different uh, qualities to them. That's why it's not at number one. So in the end, if you like a fougere, if you like a green, uh, very lavender very aromatic, spicy, uh, then the fougere royale is going to do it for you. Again, they're not identical. None of these are gonna be identical. They're gonna come really close to smelling like Rive Gauche Pour Homme, but then again, they're gonna be different. And I'm, spe I'm speaking about fragrances from various brands that don't do clones. So these were not cloned, cloning of, you know, Rive Gauche Pour Homme. They're not fragrances that were like to make to smell like Rive Gauche Pour Homme. These are their own interpretations of a Fougere bar barbershop fragrance. But in the end, I feel like this one's really close to Rive Gauche Pour Homme. There are differences, of course, and it does dry down to smelling very similar to Rive Gauche. Not quite the same though. Anyway, Hubigant Fougere Royale, wonderful fragrance. I feel like that's my number two uh, close fragrance. And then number one, it's uh, Bracken Man from the house of uh, Amouage. This one came really close to smelling like Rive Gauche Pour Homme. In fact, it dries down to smell really, really close. And here, um, Rive Gauche Pour Homme has cloves in the notes. Uh, this one has really prominent cloves as well. I feel like the cloves are really prominent here, not as much in Rive Gauche, but in the end, when they're drying down, it starts smelling very, very close to Rive Gauche. The only thing that this doesn't have that that one does have, the Rive Gauche has, is the star anise, the licorice touch, whereas this one does not have it. But this one has uh, lots of cypress uh, note, cloves, patchouli, lavender, nutmeg, geranium, cedar, cinnamon, sandalwood. So it's a spicier take on Rive Gauche and a lot longer lasting take on Rive Gauche. Both, all of these fragrances, as I was saying, uh, do last a lot longer than what this particular fragrance does, and especially this one, because this one's pretty weak. Uh, it doesn't last a long time at all. But if you want your intense version of Rive Gauche Pour Homme, I feel like this is gonna be the number one um, example. And this is gonna be pricier, of course, um, but you can find these all at discounters. I think Maison Margiela rarely is on discounters. I always look and they're never on discounters. In Europe, there might be a different story. The Chanel will not be at the discounters. The Illuminate, the, the the uh, Mousse Illumine will also not be at the discounters, and some of the others will also not be like Tom Ford's uh, Beau de Jour just came out. But a lot of the rest of them you'll find at discounters. Anyway, this is my closest option. If you don't know about this one, check it out. It's Bracken Man from Amouage. It's a wonderful release. Just keep in mind that this particular one is not so licorice or star anise like this one is. And this one is not as clovey as this one is. But in the end, they're very, very close to me. And I feel like if you want that uh, Rive Gauche replacement, Rive Gauche Pour Homme replacement, Bracken Man should do it. Now, some of you might be more sensitive to specific notes and then you might test them out and say, wow, this is nothing alike. 
this is just depending on chemistry. This is what my experiences are. If you wanted to check them out, I, like I said, get yourself some samples to test them out rather than just blind buying because uh, every body chemistry is different. But for me, that's when this one came the closest. Anyway, those are my thoughts on uh, alternatives for Reeve Gauche Pour Homme. It's the beloved fragrance in Frag Calm that uh, a lot of guys, men, really like it. And sadly, it's no longer. Um, I don't know if... Um, YSL will bring them back. I don't think they will. It's really, really, really weird that they've discontinued this, but they've kept this in this bottle since 1971. So, um, it's odd. I guess this just didn't do very well. Men don't like it, but men really love this one. So, I don't know what they're thinking. It's just a marketing uh, or business um, practice, I guess, to can some fragrances that are not performing very well. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know about these fragrances that I recommended as alternatives for Reeve Gauche Pour Homme. Have you tried them? Do you like them? Do you own them? Let me know. Also, let me know if you have any other alternatives that come really, really close to Reeve Gauche Pour Homme in both versions. All right. Put some comments down so I can find out. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching today. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I'll be back with more videos very soon, guys. Thanks so much. Have a good one. Goodbye.